Hey guys, so uh, we'll be continuing with our lecture on uh, free fall ex uh, acceleration or free fall motion. So let's just uh, clear a concept, a little concept here. Let me, let's just take this one. Let's just make an apple here. Let's just say this is an apple. Okay. This is an apple here. Okay. Let's just say this is uh, uh, mm, a coin here. Let's just say this is a coin here. Let's make a man here. This is a man here. And uh, we have a car here. And let's say we have a feather. Okay, my battery is going down, but let's say we have a feather here. So we have five objects here. If I simply drop all of them from a cliff at the same time, And I just tell you that the air resistance is negligible or it could be considered as zero. So you know that this is free fall. So the question arises, what happens if, what, what is the difference between all of the objects if there is a change in mass you can see there is a change in mass there is a change in size there's a change in dimensions yes there's a change in area surface area for all these is different and um, there is let's say uh, a change in volume obviously so everything is different even there's a change in density so what effect does it have on all of these five objects with different masses, different sizes, areas, volume, density. So let me tell you, let me, if you thought, let's just guess which one in your basic intuition about falling, what do you think, which one would fall the first? I think this one would fall first. And then probably this one, and then this one, or, or this one, and then like this would be the first, the second, and this would be the third, fourth, and then after that, fifth one. But let me tell you, we are wrong because we know that air resistance, since we've been told that air resistance is negligible. This means that there is no air resistance interfering. There is only one thing that is making them fall and it is the gravitational acceleration. So only one thing that is making all of these fall is the gravitational acceleration. So which is, uh, as we know from the previous video, which is 9.81 meters per second square. So, let's see. Let's just see. Let's just keep all those five objects in mind. We had an apple. We had a car. We had a man. Feather. And one more thing, I don't remember what was it, coin, yes, I always forget the coin. So let's imagine that we have these five objects. So let's make a graph for all five of them. Let's see what happens to them under the influence of gravity only. For Let's say, let's talk about the apple. The apple has an initial velocity of zero and it's only under the influence of gravitational acceleration which is 9.81 meters per second square so first second let's say the cliff and and normally a cliff this is the cliff this is a velocity time graph here this is the cliff and let's say after three seconds 
we just see where each one of them is. So we just uh, see after three seconds where they are. They might not have landed, but they will be in the air. But we'll see for all three of them, all five of them. So in the first second, from zero, the velocity would have uh, changed to 9.81 meters per second. Second second, the velocity would have changed to 19.96 or whatever, 19.62 meters per second. Third second, the velocity would have changed to 29.43 meters per second. Because there is an increase of 9.81 meters per second every second from the initial velocity. So this will be the graph. So at the third second, let's see how much distance it would have covered. Let's see. From the initial position, we know how to calculate the distance. The distance is simply area under a velocity time graph under a VT graph. So in this case, the area is this for the apple. This is a triangle, so half times base times height. If you do not know this, then just watch the previous lectures on area under the curve, and you will understand. So this is half times 3 times 29.43. So you can use a calculator here, and you will see that uh, I can't find my calculator here. So I'm not able to calculate this, but let's just keep it here. Let's just see there is an answer here. Just calculate it yourself. And whatever the answer is, the distance traveled in these three seconds by this one apple. So let's just say it's just here, this distance. Now, if you notice, if you just simply notice, let me just use my eraser. And if you simply notice, that if I make the graph of a car here again the car will be initially at zero at one second its velocity this is a velocity time graph again its velocity will increase from zero to plus 9.81 because the acceleration is just the gravitational acceleration its velocity in the second second its velocity will increase from 9.81 to 19 point six two so it will go somewhere here and the third second it will go to twenty nine point four three go somewhere here again this will be a straight line and if I calculate the distance moved by this it's just, just the same graph so if I calculate the distance move this will again be half times base times height and again the same thing sorry yeah yes half times base is three times 29.43 the result will be the same so it will have covered the same distance in those three seconds as the apple and so if you draw the graph of the man the feather the coin you will realize that they would have all covered the same distance uh, as each one of them so that means that in the case of a free fall in a given amount of time all would have covered the same distance which means because they all have the same velocities at different intervals they all have same velocity if you draw a graph of the feather you will see that it will ha have the same velocity so this means that they will all land at the same speed under uh, if they're being if they're under the uh, influence of gravity only if there is air resistance yes they will all every all of the factors will be included the mass the dimensions the area the volume the density everything the, the velocity even the velocity the surface area everything will be will uh, uh, affect the distance that is that it moves in a in a particular time but when we clear out the air and there is no air in in a, in a chamber but that is uh, uh, difficult to do in practical situations but if we just do it if we make a vacuum and you know without with clearing the air we will see that no matter what the mass, no matter what the dimension, what the area, they will all fall at the same speed. That is the beauty of free fall of acceleration. Free fall under acceleration, yes. So, if you were notified in a question that there is free fall by any, any of the two things, let's say they, they tell you that the, the gravitational acceleration is constant, you should 
understand that it's uh, the object is under free fall also if they tell you that the air resistance is negligible and the object is thrown from a cliff or somewhere the air resistance is zero you should understand that it is free fall and under free fall this is the only graph and for any object zero velocity if you are making the velocity time graph time graph and position time graph oh sorry time this is meters per second at one this would be at 9.8 meters per second at two this would be at 19.62 meters per second at three this would be at 29.43 meters per second and this would always make a straight line like this this is the only graph of free fall so you should identify with this graph and if I make an acceleration time graph of this so you would know that if I have acceleration here so throughout this journey we have only one acceleration which is 9.81 meters per second square so your acceleration time graph would look something like this so since this is one two three just ask yourself what is the acceleration at one the acceleration at one acceleration not the velocity the acceleration at one can be found out by the gradient let's if you just find, find out the acceleration you will know that it's 9.81 so at one the acceleration is 9.81 at two the acceleration would be 9.81 you can just find it yourself again just try it the acceleration and find out the gradient and you will know at every point that the acceleration is simply 9.81 meters per second square at every point so even at three seconds this would be at 9.81 so this is a uniform acceleration at 9.81 meters per second square so i hope you guys understood this and if you have a problem kindly just comment so i can reply to them and uh we'll be moving on with some more examples so that you understand about free fall so thanks for watching guys